What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. We're here for a new episode of the Philadelphia Eagles Madden 21 flashback franchise here at pick 22 in the 2012 draft. And obviously when you're picking at 22, it's kind of how we hyped up the pick in the last video. It's like, all right, well we made the playoffs, but we didn't go very far in the playoffs. So now we're kind of stuck in that awkward spot where it's like, how good of a player are we actually going to be able to get? And when you look at our team right now, you're seeing a squad that like offensively, I don't see any weaknesses. Defensively, okay. Um, linebacker, right? We need a linebacker. You could argue safety as well. We have Quentin McKell there. Uh, 5'10", 206. I mean, he can play free. He can play strong. He's just generally a safety. So safety is definitely a spot we want to get better at. Uh, linebacker as well. The defense not nearly, even corner. But the defense not nearly as set and forget as the offense is. So we entered this draft. I made a draft board. And I let you guys choose what direction we went for our picks. And this is our board. We had Levante, David, Dante Hightower, and Michael Kendricks at linebacker. Or we could look at Harrison Smith at safety. Really, all these options are pretty good. There is a chance that if we get Hightower, you know, we're not going to be able to get that safety in the second round. But there is a chance that if we get Harrison Smith, maybe Michael Kendricks and or Levante David could be there at pick 22 in the second round. Most likely will not be the case, but at least you have that that chance where it, it could happen. Anything is possible. If you look at the draft that we had in the last episode, it was outstanding. And like Navarro Bowman was a guy, um, I thought for sure he'd be off the board. He was still there in the third round when he was coming out of Penn State. But either way, I let you guys, and I was sifting through the comments, see which one made the most sense. And this one really hit home. You know, the Eagles have failed to try and replace Brian Dawkins. I mean, Malcolm Jenkins, kind of, but like we didn't even draft Michael Jenkins. We got him from the Saints. And at that time, too, from the Saints, he was kind of like a eh, corner that a lot of people thought, like, yeah, maybe he could make that change to safety. And we did that. But it wasn't like a natural replacement for Brian Dawkins. And stylistically, not a, a replacement for Brian Dawkins. So, Harrison Smith, while again, not necessarily like a, a, a clone of what Brian Dawkins brought, but in terms of an impact safety. Uh, and not having to hit free agency and, and spend in that open market. For someone like Malcolm Jenkins, let's bring in Harrison Smith. Oh, he's going to be good. 79 hidden dev. Number nine in true value. And again, just to be clear, sometimes I do see ratings like, whoa, C4, only a 79? Like, you should be way... These and all the ratings that you see for all the first round players in my drafts and for a lot of the second and third rounders are their authentic rookie ratings from the year that they were a rookie in Madden. So this is Harrison Smith's Madden 13 rating when he was on the Minnesota Vikings. 79, obviously the depth rate didn't exist, but he looks really damn good. 89 speed, 91 acceleration, 77 zone, 83 tackle, 88 hit power, 79 pursuit. This guy is very, very good. And with that, we'll probably keep him at strong and kick Quentin McKell into free safety this season. Late in the second round, here is kind of how our board is. I suppose I'll show this too. I, like, I don't know the way to do it, but like, obviously in special teams, you have Hecker and Justin Tucker. I feel like I'm not going to wait to UDFA to pick those guys up because then we're going to have like the best special teams unit in the entirety of the NFL. And if I was going to draft them, I would take them at their talent value and I would burn this second round selection on them. But here's how the rest of the board looks. We do have a lot of options at quarterback. Um, Russell Wilson, Ryan Tannehill, Brandon Weed, and Kirk Cousins. I do, and also Nick Foles. I do not think it's time yet to to prepare for life beyond Michael Vick. I still think we got a year or two more, and it's just not the proper time. You know, if you draft Russell Wilson in rebuild, he's going to be your day one starter. You don't want to just wait and see. Same goes for Tannehill. Any of these first round quarterbacks, Kirk Cousins. Yeah, that could actually make a little bit of sense from a value standpoint. Um, but. I'm in the business of, we need a linebacker. We didn't scout Demario Davis, which is unfortunate. I do think he'd be an awesome fit. We need a linebacker so... Like, how bad do we need a linebacker? Because Brandon Brooks is there, and I would love to have Brandon Brooks start his career in Philadelphia, not go to Houston, and then eventually come back. And he could be the heir to either Todd Harriman, who's a 29, and he is stuck on that normal dev, or Sean Andrews, eventually, who's also 29. So you could get younger there and get that young pairing right now of Jason Kelsey and Brandon Brooks in the inside. Um... But when you look at the defense, man, like, we need a linebacker so, 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 so badly. So I, I just think we're so desperate that I'll, I'll surpass the good feel-good story of having Brandon Brooks come back to Philadelphia. We just have to go best linebacker available. No scouting for Demario Davis, but the combine is very high. 
And this one we're gonna have 69 hidden dev number 49 in true value, getting him at pick 54, 90 speed, 98 accelerate or 90 acceleration, sorry, 74 tackle, 70 hit power. The pursuit solid. The zone coverage of 70 is also pretty damn good. I'll take that. All right, I'm gonna break my own rule a little bit. What I was just saying, we Hacker and Justin Tucker, they're like the you know, obviously generational talents. In the third round, I, I, I grabbed Johnny Hecker. Not so much Justin Tucker because the kicker. We have Dan Bailey who won kicker of the year, kicker of the NFC as a rookie. And while his rating is not going to be as good as obviously what Justin Tucker would be, you know, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But Johnny Hecker, one of the best punters in the NFL, like Bill Belichick's favorite player, number 54 in true value. I will spend my third round selection on him and not because Kirk Cousins was still there. And I wanted something to distract me from the fact that I might need to have Kirk Cousins be the heir to Michael Vick in Philadelphia. If he's still there in the fourth round, though, I will draft Kirk Dirt. As we finish the draft, the tail in the draft actually wasn't that good. There was a couple of gems, a couple underrated players that I wanted to bring in, but uh, really the, the three premier picks were the three obvious selections of Harrison Smith, Demario Davis, and Johnny Hecker. Outside of that, I got to hear Whitehead. Should be a solid depth linebacker for us. I'm actually going to make him a uh, right outside linebacker. That's where we need the depth there. Just give me a sec. Um... We got Masakwai, 62. I got Bryce Brown, who actually was a member of the Philadelphia Eagles, one of the highest rated running back recruits coming out of high school and then kind of busted his way out of college, uh, unfortunately. But he was, I mean, man, remember him on Philly, man? He was always one of those what ifs. Like, oh, man, he might be good. Who knows? But we just need, a, we need another running back on the stable there. And then I finished up in the draft, adding more depth to the offensive line by bringing in Mike Remmers, the left tackle out of Oregon State. So, you know, not the greatest way to finish it off here in day three. But those first three picks should be impactful players as rookies. So let's meet the team as we gear up for this 2012 season. Hopefully going in the playoffs yet again and going a little bit deeper than the year previous. Offensively remains the exact same. No changes outside of some of the depth. All of our starters are still there. Defensively a little bit different. Secondary so pretty much the same as Dante Samuel, Sheldon Brown, Ellis Hobbs in the slot. We quick uh, Kitten McKell over to free safety. No overall damage, decrease, increase. He's still an 82. But that accommodates Harrison Smith now to be our franchise strong safety. Now rocking correctly. Number 22, 80 overall, hidden dev. Hopefully it's an X factor, but at least should be having some sort of expectations that that is a superstar. And for the linebacker, go to Mario Davis. We'll be getting the starter right outside linebacker with Bowman on the other side and Bradley there inside in the middle. So it's, uh, you know, it's good. On both sides of the ball, playoff caliber. And uh, let's keep and hopefully find a lot of success for what could potentially be the last prime year for Michael Vick. He is a 93 overall. He's not regressing, but he is 32. So it is only kind of a matter of time till that wall hits. Hopefully it's not, you know, next offseason coming up. But, you know, what? let's not think that far down the road. Let's think about this year. Let's think about dominating this year. Think about getting Michael Vick back into that MVP form and carrying this team to another deep playoff run. The midway point of 2012, not started the way we wanted it to. We're 2-5, and five. however, we're on a two-game winning streak. I think we just finally got on that rut, because week six, Michael Vick was outstanding. He had six touchdowns, no picks, got Offensive Player of the Week. Then we shut out the football team in the divisional important game to try to get back into it. So I think we might be able to go on a little bit of a run here. I want that to continue. And because we're so bad against Seattle in real life, I'm going to hop in and play that one and see if we can get three wins in a row and go to three and five in the battle of the two and five NFC teams here. So um, that being said, we might as well handle some contract business before we get too, too far into this episode. So look at the guys we have available. I mean, that's just, that's just expensive. A lot of these guys are, are pretty damn expensive. I do... Th hmm. It will prioritize the Sean Jackson, all right? I want d -Jax here to lose 30. $16 million cap, it is pretty big. Same thing with Jeremy Macklin. We're going to invest a lot in the skill position spot so that if we don't have the best quarterback, when Michael Vick does decide to hang it up, at least there's going to be playmakers there. That can help. And wow, they're looking for the exact same contract, which is fine. We got Jason Peters, who we all know is going to play at, you know, play till he's goddamn 70 at this rate. But I, I definitely want to re-sign Jason Peters. Definitely want to get Asante Samuel as well on a one-year deal. That's a lot of money, 18 million bucks, but there's not going to be a better corner in the market. And, you know, it's one of those deals. Like, if we didn't sign a Sunday Sam, we'll be hoping that we could get a corner in free agency on the market, and he's 100% going to be the best guy there. So we'll make sure we can extend Jason Peters, give him a three-, four-year-ish deal, uh, and we'll wait and see for Todd Harriman's. It could come back, because, again, 
like to ride the lineman into the ground when you can, but two-year contract, I mean, there's a good chance that by the end of that two-year contract, he'll be getting paid pretty good money, will need salary cap, and he'll be like a 77 overall, and that'd sting just a little bit. So want to sneak a peek at what the Seattle Seahawks are working with. They have Rob Gronkowski as their superstar X-Factor. Lofa Tatupa, there's a name. Marcus Trufant, Leroy Hill, all names I haven't heard in a long time. Bruce Gradkowski at quarterback. Chris Harris Jr. at corner. It's all a team, man. If we can stop Gronk, though, especially with, you know, the new additions. Demario Davis, Navarro Bowman with his brand new superstar dev. And obviously the addition of Harrison Smith. We do have the guys that can handle and contain Rob Gronkowski. This, this should be a win. Oh. Oh, come on. Oh, it's just, ah, oh, it's the stuff. You think it's cheesy. But, like, back when I was actually kind of good at Madden, about seven years ago, you would get at least two shots like that. Where Deshaun Jackson, instead of just running past the DB, it's all about connection. It's all about the deep accuracy. And right there, Michael Vick can't miss. Truth be told, second drive here, man. They're doing a good job limiting the explosive plays. You know me. I've been trying to hit that Deshaun. They've done a good job containing him. Oh, that's a good run there. Uh, as it's low score, I thought it was going to be every time, every single time we get the ball, we'd be able to just toss a 60-yard tutty to whoever we want, be it Antonio Brown, Deshaun Jackson, or Jeremy Macklin. And uh, the Seahawks defense, is they're, they're playing tough, man. They're playing tough. All right, let's see. Let's get. Let's let Sean McCoy finish this one off. Shady, come on, buddy. Fine. Oh, it's just too easy. The juke move when you have like 97 elusiveness, 97 juke, whatever you want to call it. That's just what happens. That's what you do on the regular. Two touchdown lead here for the Eagles early in the second quarter. Give me a shot. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's go, Djax. Too easy. Too easy. Lash I think this is going to be the breakout year for LaShawn McCoy. He's had some strong seasons, has not had a good enough year to go up to an X-Factor. But, I mean, when you're just dominant like that out of the backfield, you're just, he literally looks a speed faster than anybody in the linebacker or, or corner or secondary DB room on the opposing teams. So how do you cover him? <laughs> I mean, it's not all Madden, but my God, having a guy with like a <laughs> damn near 99 juke move should be banned. It should be like he literally, I just move my stick and he's impossible to tackle unless someone on their team has like a superstar ability. And at the end of the season, turn it around. 10 and 6, not a super sexy record, but is good enough to sneak into the playoffs. I do think we pulled away from the rest of the teams in the NFC East because it was NFC least. 7-9, Dallas was the runner-up. So, I, you know, we'll take that for sure. We had hidden devs on three of our players. Demario Davis, Johnny Hecker, and Harrison Smith. Let's see on the defense. Demario Davis, star dev. Harrison Smith, superstar dev. And Johnny Hecker, still unknown. Could be superstar. Only 69 punts on the year. I will take that. But I mean, I wish there was a way you can make your hold. Like your punter, your holder. And that counts for his reps. But either way, I know for sure that LaShawn McCoy was outstanding this year. I also think Michael Vick was very good. Look at the stats here. Michael Vick, 13th in yards, but first in touchdowns. 42 touchdowns, 6 interceptions to go along with 143 rushing yards. Look at that for LaShawn McCoy. 22 touchdowns. That's going to be out there. I think I've seen more. Like I had more with Adrian Peterson. But 22, almost 17 and 22. That's easily like a top 10 running back season. That I've had here in Madden 21. Good for you, LaShawn McCoy. Hopefully that gives yourself a dev trait. No receiver over 1,000 yards. AB was our leader with 950 and 11 touchdowns. 9 and 8 for D-Jax. 870 and 11 for Jeremy Macklin. 7 and 6 for Selleck. 4 and 4 for LaShawn McCoy. So that's 2,100 yards, 26 touchdowns for Shady. He could be the MVP. Uh, on the defensive side, 114 tackles, 2 picks for Ellis Hobbs. That's weird. 16 and a half sacks, Trent Cole, 11 from Mike Patterson, 7 from Dunlap, uh, 4 picks, Asante Samuel leading the team. I'm happy with all of these numbers. The rookie, Demario Davis, 73 tackles, 3 sacks, 2 picks. Yes, sir. Number one offense in the NFL. MVP. Well, oh, let's go, Shady. 
Let's go, MVP LaShawn McCoy beating up Mark Sanchez. Michael Vick at number three. So we have one and three in the MVP race. What We're taking bets right now that I'm one and done the playoffs. So Sean McCoy is the Offensive Player of the Year. Michael Vick at number three. Defense Player of the Year went to DeMarcus Ware. Trent Cole at five. Offensive Rookie went to RG3. Defense Rookie went to Bruce Irvin. Demario Davis coming in at number five. Quarterback Vick. Running back Shady. Wide receiver. Wow, AB down there at five. I guess we didn't have any thousand yards. Davin Joseph uh, beat out Sean Andrews and Jason Peters for Lineman of the Year. D Lineman went to Trent Cole. Uh, DB, Asante Samuel at number three. Cool. A lot of individual success. 10 and 6. Like that, those are really, really good numbers for a 10 and 6. Those losses might have been a little bit cheesy. But hey, let's start this playoff run with the most explosive offense in the NFL. Please don't have us lose with scoring like 10, 13, 14 points. All right, let's go. Panthers. I didn't even look at the roster. Don't even make me think about it. We should just smoke them. This should be uncontested. This team here, at minimum, should make it to the championship game. Anything less is going to be an utter failure. We score three points in the first quarter. Looking like we're struggling to get over a half here. Oh, my God. Come on. Do not do this to me. We're down three. Down ten. Looking for some big plays. It would go at halftime. Kick the field goal. Lots of field goals here for uh, two MVP finalists. Not a lot of... Can we make a game of it? No. Okay. Appreciate Michael Vick. Going for 52% completion percentage. And Sean McCoy going for 38 yards. All-time performance from the Panthers defense. We'll just keep it as that and fucking move on. Unreal. This game sucks. Good news is, there has to be a silver lining at the end of the year. I got two upgrades here for Mr. LaShawn McCoy. He does have the plus two morale boost, but let's just to make it look good. Let's get him up to that 99. As you can see, he has the X Factor. Oh, did they give him freight train ability? Because I think of LaShawn McCoy, I think about a guy that breaks... I mean, that's actually not bad. I don't know, what other abilities can we give him? Wrecking Ball? No. Truck rate, no. Death rate catches, no. First one free probably should be what LaShawn McCoy has. I'm going to say first one free. Ankle breaker. Ooh. That's after the catch? All right, we'll give him first one free. That that seems more in line with what LaShawn McCoy can bring to the team. I just still can't believe we had, like, two of the best players in the NFL. Offensively. And not to mention... 98 Macklin, 98 D-Jax, 88 Antonio Brown, and an offensive line that also has two 99s. And we, you know, outside of a garbage time touchdown, we had 13 fucking points against the Carolina Panthers. Ah, so lame. Um, Trent Cole went up to an X-Factor. Well, we had a lot of dev traits. Unstoppable force, Trent Cole, D-Lineman of the Year. Mike Patterson said did free agency. Of course, I didn't resign him. He went up to superstar dev. Um, Luvaro Bowman went up to an X Factor. What does he got? Shutdown. Mm, I don't think we're going to give him shutdown. I think, uh, I don't even know. Reinforcement, probably. Let's have some fun. Give him reinforcement. Make him super OP. And he's actually, uh, hopefully next season, earlier, sooner than later, he will get that final ability slot. So, I'm, I mean... From a rebuild, team-building standpoint, happy with all those dev traits. Would I have traded all those dev traits for a Super Bowl run? I don't know, but I just, you know, being one and done, that's just very unsatisfactory. Patriots get their eighth Super Bowl, beating the 49ers. I can see, I like to see that, though. LaShawn McCoy, MVP, Offensive Player of the Year. Might as well. Might as well flex on him a little bit when we can. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have to go in free agency. Not a lot of money. Don't really know what we're going to do here. We do have $30 bucks. If we're looking at positions that we want to get better. Ooh, Johnny Hecker, superstar dev, as kind of expected. Uh, we could use a free safety, but not really any young upgrades over Quentin McKell. In the secondary, could absolutely use a corner. And we're looking for a cheap and or young corner with some upside. And that simply doesn't exist. And I'm not... Bringing in Bradley Fletcher, Orlando Skandrick, two absolute memes that Philadelphia has had at cornerback over the last couple of years. So maybe it's a chance for 
censored Van censored uh, to at least be like corner three when all is said and done this year. Um, it's not. Not looking like a great free agent here. D-tackle, Chris Jenkins. I mean, Mike Patterson has a lot of competitive offers there. Probably we've priced ourselves out, which is unfortunate. But, hey, at least he, at least his final year in Philly looked pretty damn good. Offensive line, I mean, we're, we're really happy with a lot of these spots. Todd Harriman, of course, is the best player at his position. Uh, there is no offers on him. He's only looking for a one-year. That's like a band-aid. I'll take that on a one-year band-aid because we're not going to be spending our money elsewhere. There's nothing else that's even remotely intriguing. In terms of a signing here. Fake Mike Thomas. Not the real one. Beanie Wells, for God's sakes. Got the sheriff, the general there. Donovan McNabb. Eh. Let's just, uh, let's just try to bring back Todd Herman's on a one year and go into the draft. So for the draft, where we're going to end this, pretty much where we were last year. What, we picked 22 at the beginning of this video. Now we're at 23. One spot better. Still, still need to get good. You're looking at that, man. We, it looks like we're going to have to continue to, to build the defense. You look at the offense here, outside of quarterback, and this is not a strong quarterback class. This is like an A-tier, S-tier even offense. Right? We could get younger at guard, maybe get someone that can replace Jason Peters. I, I mean, younger at guard, yeah. If there's like an all-pro guard, I mean, Quentin Nelson ain't in this draft. Quentin Nelson is probably the only way I'm drafting a guard in the first round. But on the defensive side, plenty of spots we could get better at. Obviously, we want to kind of commit to developing Carlos Dunlap and Geno Atkins and Demario Davis. So the ratings, you know, while not great, hopefully when all said and done, they'll be good. And obviously, you can see we can get impact playmakers in just one year. Harrison Smith, 85 superstar strong safety. So look at this. We need a D-tackle. We need a corner. We could get younger at free safety as Mikel's probably going to be entering his last year as the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, we have Bradley. He's not bad. 29, though. Uh, 78 overall could do better could do better but I'd say D-tackle and corner are, are, are the two guys that I think I mean we know you know D-tackle because we have a 60 what's Poe 67 at least we got Dick Mahoney here at corner old Walter Thurman 73 overall it's not bad same with uh centered Van Center he's a 74 uh so let's see what they have at D-tackle and look at corner look at safety and obviously guard. So who's available? Like quarterback, for me, I will say this. If Geno Smith is still there with no one else, if, if there's no good corners, no good safeties, no good D tackles, this was something I thought I really wanted. Right, Geno Smith to the Eagles. I was, whatever that year, man, Geno Smith to West Virginia with Stedman Bailey and Tavon Austin. Uh, I think Steve Slayton was a running back. I mean, that was unreal. Like they were so good. I thought Geno Smith was going to be outstanding. And obviously that didn't work out, but I, I could kind of right one of those wrongs potentially here in this rebuild. Uh, I definitely would actually like to get a use check potentially as well a little bit later on in the draft if he's still there. Because Leonard Weaver's getting a little bit old. Hopkins is still there. we got some nice options of wide up, but it's just not a need. Zach Ertz could reunite him, but Selleck's been more than solid enough. And I could, you know, into the second, third round, look at a Travis Kelsey, Jordan Reed type scenario if we do want to bring in another young tight end. Uh, for guard... We got Larry Warford. I mean, you sure you probably could draft Travis Frederick and kick him into guard. Treader could be a guard. Um, yeah, not much there. So let's go to the defense, starting with D tackle. They got Sheldon Richardson, K1 Short. We have actually used K1 Short before, uh, and he actually kind of underwhelmed. But Sheldon Richardson was good. Wasn't he defensive rookie of the year with the Jets? So, I mean, that's absolutely a top priority. Benny Logan. I always thought he was a very underrated Eagle while he was here. But that's obviously a little bit later on in the draft. See, we did our due diligence, scouted everyone. Brandon Williams, also a really good run stuffer. Had a great career with the Baltimore Ravens. Middle linebacker, ooh, ooh Manti Teo is here. There's another redemption story. That's one thing we haven't done here in Philadelphia in this Eagles rebuild. It's something I always try to do is have an element of, like, career resurgence. You know, with the Chargers, the last one we did. We had that with Taylor Mays. We had that with Kelvin Benjamin. We haven't had that yet, I don't think, with Philly. Have we had anybody that's kind of been a bust? I think for the most part, we've been, not, not, I'm not going to say cheese in it, but we've been just drafting like BPA in a lot of these scenarios. So, I mean, Sean Andrews, I guess, was a bust for the Eagles uh, when all said and done. But that was like off the field stuff, not necessarily on the field. Uh, yeah, no one. Like we have yet to, I saw Manti Teo kind of fits what we like to do in this series. And we've yet to do at middle linebacker, even though I, you know, that's a slight reach, knowing his talent value for our first-round pick. 
Uh, Ogletree also could make sense as a middle linebacker. Just kick him inside there. In the secondary, ooh. I have used him before. But Darius Slay, it's been a while. I think I literally used him in the very first flashback rebuild we did. I could be wrong on that. But we have used him before, but it could be nice having Darius Slay. What if Darius Slay played his whole career at the Philadelphia Eagles? I'm 100% have used Honey Badger, I think, twice already. So I'd rather not go down that direction. A little bit later on, Micah Hyde's here. We have Jordan Poyer, who actually was drafted by the Eagles as a corner, oddly enough, and then eventually went to the, uh, I think he bounced around, I think he went to the Browns, and then finally moved to safety and became really good. I would love to bring Jordan Poyer in as a depth corner, but right now, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, I think Darius Slay's probably got Matt Elam there, kind of a known bust, even though there's Gator bias at safety. I'm thinking Darius Slay or Sheldon Richardson is probably where I'm leaning for our pick, especially because Eagles and you know Darius Slay would be cool to see if he didn't have to go to Detroit and actually stopped by here. And have him play right now as an outside corner with Asante Samuel. But I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Again, you gave me a great reason to go with Harrison Smith in the last draft to kick off this video. So give me a good reason what direction we should go here in the 2013 NFL draft. And I will just do it. So thank you guys for watching today's video. As always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. I got to go get my big ass on the old elliptical. Put in some work here. It's flex season this summer. And uh, after I'm done that, I'll probably record uh, the finale, regular season finale of UNLV. That should be up to you guys tomorrow. Well, the Eagles fucking sign someone in free agency. I keep checking my phone, and they're not doing a damn thing, which is kind of expected. But still, give me something. I'm bored. I'm bored. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.